Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to explore how to find at what angle the rolling cylinder, this is a, a solid disc, will begin to slip rather than roll down the incline. The steeper it gets, the less the friction force becomes because the friction force is proportional to the cosine of the angle. The larger the angle becomes, the smaller the friction force, and at some point, the friction force will not be sufficient to keep the cylinder rolling and the cylinder will begin to slide. The question is, at what angle will this begin to happen? What we want to do first is solve the problem like we did before, and just I didn't want to spend all the time, I just quickly went over it, and we can say that we use the equation, the torque equals I times alpha, and the force equals M times A. We're going to solve those simultaneously, and we've done that before in a video a little bit earlier in the series. So when we plug in the torque, which is caused by the friction force, which is right here, mg cosine theta times mu, times r, that would be the distance from the point of rotation to where the friction force is acting, that's the torque is equal to the moment of inertia times acceleration, the angle acceleration, which can be written as a over r. When we simplify that, we end up with this equation right here, where the acceleration is equal to 2g cosine theta times mu. We then also want to solve the equation f equals ma. We have the force pulling the cylinder down the incline, the friction force opposing that force. So we have mg sine theta minus the friction force equals the mass times acceleration. Again, we simplify this and we solve this for mu. Once we take mu and we plug that into this equation, we can then solve the acceleration, which ends up being 2 thirds g sine theta. And if you'd like to see how that was done, just go back to the previous video earlier on in the series. But now what we want to do is find out at what point, at what angle, the cylinder will begin to slip rather than roll down the incline. So we're going to take this equation right here and solve it for mu. So starting here, we can say that mu is equal to a divided by 2g times the cosine of theta. And then we realize that a is equal to this, so we can then plug this part in here, and now we can write that mu is equal to the acceleration, which is 2 thirds, 2 thirds, g sine theta, so we write that instead of a, and we divide it by 2g cosine of theta, which means that mu, the coefficient of friction, is equal to this ratio. The 2's cancel out, the g's cancel out, and sine divided by cosine is tangent, which means we have mu is equal to one-third the tangent of theta. Now, if we solve this equation for the tangent of theta, we get the tangent of theta is equal to 3 times mu. And then, if we take the arc tangent, we can now say that theta, the angle, is equal to the inverse tangent of 3 times mu. Or what this equation is telling us, that if theta becomes larger than this, we can no longer have an acceleration, then it exceeds the maximum friction force this can provide. And so now what, all we have to do is plug in various values from mu to see what the angle would be. For example, if mu is equal to 0 0.1, then theta maximum will be equal to the arc tangent of 3 times 0 0.1, which means we're looking for the arc tangent of 0 0.3. 0 0.3, take the inverse tangent, and I get an angle of 16.7 degrees. That's equal to 16.7 degrees. Let's say that if mu was equal to 0 0.2, then we can have a steeper angle. How steep? Well, then theta max will be equal to the arc tangent of 3 times 0 0.2. And let's see what that gives us. So that's 0.6, take the arc tangent of that. That gives me an angle of almost 31 degrees, 31.0 degrees. 31.0 degrees, and so forth. So all we have to do is plug in various values from mu, and it tells us what the steepest angle we can have is before the cylinder begins to slide right on roll down the hill. And that's how we determine that. 